Hi everybody, this is Tim from Pitsco Education and we're here today to go ahead and do an activity with the Tetrix Prime wheelie bot that we just built. Before we do that, I wanna make sure everybody understands how the gamepad uh, that we've got here actually works with the wheelie bot as we have it built. So uh, I need everybody to understand that on the gamepad we actually have four channels and those four channels are alignment with the joysticks. So we've got four channels uh, four different axes of motion that each one of the joysticks can go through. And so we have two joysticks, four axes. Those axes align with or correspond with the four channels that we have on the wireless receiver. So I have channels one through four on the receiver and I have channels um, one through four uh, associated with the axes on the joystick. So for the robot that we have, I have my steering um, on this front servo actually plugged into my channel number four, and my drive motor is actually plugged into channel number two. So on my actual gamepad, um, the even numbers are associated with the joystick on the right. I have two that's vertical, and I have four that's left and right, and on my left, joystick I have three that's vertical and one that's left and right so that when I power on my robot and I power on my gamepad and I get a pairing when I move my joystick on the left which is two if I move it to the left my robot will steer to the left when I move it to the right it will steer to the right and when I move it forward my robot will move forward and when I move it pull it back, it will move back. So that's part of the human interface between the robot and the gamepad. And we need to understand how that all works together so we get the behavior that we expect once we actually begin to operate our robot. So once we have all that the way that we want to, and you might need to move the channels uh, on the receiver to correspond with the joystick. So in other words, if I want my forward motion to be on my right side and my steering on the left, I might have to change the channels on my receiver. Once you have that the way you want it, we're ready to go ahead and do the activity. Okay, so we're ready to go and what we're gonna do is actually create a slalom course. So in the starter set, we have some small Dixie cups. So we're gonna take those and we're gonna create a start line with tape and a finish line with tape. And um, how long that is is based on your available space. But once you create that start and finish line, you're gonna set the cups out between the lines. And the idea is to actually time how long it takes to drive between the lines from start to finish by each particular driver. Once you've done that, we're ready to go on and move on to the second part of the activity. So now that everybody's had a chance to go ahead and drive through the first time to establish that baseline or figure out a, a, an average time, how long it takes to drive between the start and finish line, the question becomes on which direction did you drive? Did you drive with the steering in the front or in the back? And what we wanna do now is go back and do that a second time to establish which is more efficient because it might make a difference. It might be easier for you and quicker uh, are more efficient if you drive with this in the front versus uh, this direction or it might be vice versa. So we want to do a second round and we want you to find out which is more efficient, driving with steering in the back or steering in the front.
Now that each driver has had a chance to go through the course in both directions with steering in the front and steering in the back, I'd like you to get together as a group and discuss the merits of each individual uh, method. Is one better than the other? You guys need to decide that. For additional information, please visit pitsco.com or tetrixrobotics.com and find out more about Tetrix Robotics Building System.